Earlier this year, I was asked to provide a lecture about the theory of organ therapy because of the importance of this topic. However, I decided to create this presentation. In his book, Character Analysis, Dr. Wilhelm Reich, the founder of Organomy, stated that organ therapy comprises all medical and pedagogical uh, techniques which makes use of biological energy, the organ, the cosmic organ energy from which the concept of organ therapy derives. This was not discovered until 1939. Yet long before this discovery, the goal of character analysis was conceived as the liberation of psychic energy, as it was called at that time from the character armor and muscular armor and establishment of orgastic potency. Based on Rush's definition, the principal entity for organ therapy is the biological energy, the organ. Therefore, the first step in describing organ therapy is to become acquainted with its concept and natural function in the body. It is important to understand the source from which this energy originates, to which it returns, and how it propagates in the body. The knowledge of ergonomy has grown out of the body of knowledge of psychoanalysis, which is founded by Sigmund Freud. Uh, Freud realized that in order to explain certain psychological phenomena, one must first assume the existence of psychosexual energy. He referred to this hypothetical energy as libido energy, which he considered the driving force behind instincts and all human actions. Freud's students, however, perhaps because of social and cultural pressures, spoke less frequently about uh, this energy and ultimately abandoned the notion of libido theory. Instead, they elaborated endlessly on other theories of Freud, such as his theory of id ego superego and his topographic theory, the uh, theory of conscious and unconscious. Uh, Reich, however, realized the central importance of libido theory from which he developed his theory of ergonomy. Reich says, basically, Freud discovered the principle of energy, the principle of energy functioning of psychic apparatus, the energy functioning principle. This was what distinguished him from all other psychologists, not so much the discovery of unconscious. The unconscious, the theory of unconscious, was to my mind a consequence of a principle he introduced into psychology. That was the principle, the natural scientific principle, the principle of energy, the libido theory. You know that very little is left of it today. Reich in the book of Cancer Biopathy says, sprouting of every plant the development of every embryo, the spontaneous movement of muscle, and productivity of every biological organism demonstrates the existence of incalculable energies governing the work of living organism. Energy is the capacity to work. This was, this what we talked was a pre prelude to, estab to establish that the foundation of organ therapy is uh, uh, the biological energy organ. However, in order to discuss the theory of organ therapy, one must follow the pedagog pedagogical um, approach customary in medical schools. Medical schools, when teaching the treatment approaches to medical students, Prior to learning these treatment approaches, students 
are first uh, be, are educated um, about the anatomy and physiology of the healthy body. Thereafter, these students are introduced into illnesses uh, and instructed about the illnesses, which is referred to as pathology. It is only then that the students are instructed about the treatment of these illnesses. During this time, students also are educated about prevention of the illnesses to protect people from becoming sick in first place. To introduce the theory of organ therapy, this same method is used as well. To understand the organ therapy, we must first learn about normal, healthy functioning of organism from an ergonomic point of view. Then we must learn about the distortions that occurs, which hinders the normal functioning and eventually causes illnesses. And then after that, we learn how to treat these illnesses and ultimately learn how to prevent prevent it in first place. In other words, uh, in medical schools, initially the, the, the students are taught the normal functioning of the body. The student should know what is normal, what is healthy and normal, which is normal physiology and uh, anatomy. And then they are taught how to, uh, about sicknesses, which is pathology. And then after that, they, ta uh, they teach the students as the treatment of uh, the, um, of the uh, illnesses. Also, they taught the students uh, about uh, prevention. So, um, um, to introduce the theory of organ therapy, this same method will, uh, will be used. To understand the organ therapy, we must first learn about the normal functioning of the organism from an ergonomic point of view. Then we must learn about uh, the distortions that occur, which hinders the normal uh, functioning and eventually uh, causes illnesses. Then next, after that, we will learn how to treat these illnesses and ultimately learn how to prevent this uh, these illnesses in first place. In describing the normal ergonomic functioning of the human organism, we must examine ergonomic functioning in primitive organisms with whom we as a human beings share basic functional principles. The basic functioning of the life in the most primitive organisms is the rhythmic alternation of contraction and expansion. In other words, the pulsation. Pulsation is nothing but rhythmic propagation of the energy. Reich stated, the animal body at the very lowest stage of development possesses an apparatus that generates electricity from the center. These are the so-called vegetative ganglia, a conglomeration of nerves and the nerve cells which arranged at a regular interval and connected with all organs and their parts by the means of very fine strands govern the involuntary life function. They are the organs of vegetative feelings and sensations. They constitute a coherent unity, a so-called syncytium, which is divided into two antithetical functional groups, sympathetic and parasympathetic. This structure and function persist in developed stages. The autonomic nervous system, also referred as vegetative nervous system, and is well known in the medical physiology and neurology. Also is well known are the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems and their functions of uh, 
inducing contraction and expansion as well as the regular and rhythmic impulses. Feelings of pleasure are associated with the parasympathetic uh, function of the expansion while non-pleasure and anxiety are associated with the sympathetic function of contraction. These basic physiological facts are recognized in medical uh, physiology and uh, are basic concepts on which the ergonomic theory of health and sickness is based upon. The capacity of the human organism to expand and contract fully without inhibition and to regulate the pulsa pulsating energy by the proper discharge of surplus energy by orgastic convulsions is the foundation upon which the uh, concepts of health and sickness are determined in ergonomy. Reich stated, as we have already pointed out, all biological impulses and organ sensations can be reduced to expansion, such as elong elongation, dilatation, and contraction, uh, such as shrinking and constriction. How are these two basic functions related to autonomic nervous system? Investigation of very complicated vegetative innervations of the organs shows that parasympathetic always functions where there is expansion, dilatation, hyperemia, turgor, and pleasure. Conversely, the sympathetic nerve function whenever there is organisms are contracts or there is contraction, blood is withdrawn from the periphery and paler, anxiety and pain appears. If we go one step further, we grasp that the parasympathetic nervous system operates in the direction of expansion, out of self, toward the world, pleasure and joy, whereas the sympathetic nervous system operates in the direction of contraction, away from the world, into the self, resulting in sadness and displeasure. The life process consists of continuous alternation between expansion and contraction. On the highest, expansion is experienced as uh, pleasure and contraction is experienced as displeasure. Uh, in the realm of instinctual phenomena, expansion functions as sexual excitation and contraction functions as anxiety. In addition, there should be centers where the biological energy originates and returns to. In ergonomy, uh, the centers that produces this pulsa uh, pulsatory energy are identified as vegetative ganglions. Reich stated, in the abdominal region, the so-called seats of emotions, we find the gen uh, generators of the biolog uh, bio biophysical uh, energy. They are the large centers of the autonomic nervous system essentially the solar plexus, hypogastric plexus, and lumbosacral plexus. In ergonomy, we also recognize the functional existence of segmental structure. Conspicuous in lower animals, such as worm, the wavy movement of the worm from head to tail maintains the direction of ergonomic movement in the human organism as well. Uh, in healthy body, the organ energy flows unimpeded from inner ganglia toward outside, undulating from the head to pelvis. The surplus energy is fully discharged by orgastic convulsions like all other living organisms. In such a normal and natural ergonotic state, 
the organism will be physically and psychologically healthy. This discharge of surplus energy regulates the energy of the organism. Human beings share the orgastic function with all other living organisms, including protozoa, uh, to regulate energy and maintain equilibrium. Therefore, the orgastic function is common among all living organisms, and anyone who studies the function of living organism has, to, has no choice but to acknowledge the essential importance of the function including its fundamental importance in the human beings, in the human organisms. The division of cells is based on orgastic principle, which reflects the essentiality of, the, of this function in all living organisms. This is why Reich has written detailed explanation and stressed the significance of this function. The following are quotations from, from Reich in relation to significance of orgastic potency in health of the human organism. Reich says, the theory of sex economy and its investigation of living phenomena can be stated in a few sentences. Psychic health depends upon orgastic potency, such as upon the degree to which one can surrender to and experience the climax of excitation in the natural sexual act. It is founded upon the healthy character attitude of individuals and his capacity for love. Psychic illness are the result of a disturbance of the natural ability to love. Psychic illnesses are the result of disturbance of natural ability to love. In the case of the orgastic impotence from which the overwhelming majority of people suffer, the damming up of biological energy occurs and becomes the source of irrational actions. The essential requirement to cure psychic disturbances is the re-establishment of the natural capacity for love. It is dependent upon social and as well as, uh, as, well as psychi uh, psychic conditions. Reich also stated, orgastic impotence has always been in the forefront of sex economic research and all of its details are still not known. Its role in sex economy is similar to the role of Oedipus complex uh, in psychoanalysis. Whoever does not have a precise understanding of it cannot be considered a sex economist. He will never really grasp its ramifications. He will not understand the difference between health and sickness, nor will he comprehend human pleasure, anxiety, or pathological nature of the parent-child conflict and the misery of marriage. He will never understand the identity between sexual process and life process, nor will he be able to grasp the sex economic theory of cancer. He will mistake sickness for health and health for sickness. He will end up misinterpreting man's fear of happiness. In short, he might be anything, but he will never be a sex economist who knows that man is the sole biological species that has destroyed its own natural sexual function and is sick as a consequence of this. The theory of orgasm is based on the four-bit formula, tension, charge, discharge, and relaxation. In summary, from the ergonomic perspective, a human being's health depends on adequate production of pulsatory organ energy from vegetative ganglions seated inside the human organism, emitting undulating energy 
from the head to the pelvis, unimpeded, and regulating the surplus energy through healthy orgastic convulsion. From an ergonomic point of view, a person with such a functioning is considered healthy. Such a person will psychologically manifest only good qualities in accordance with the laws of nature. Such a person will not be prone to biopathies. And as Dr. Reich has described, will have Christ-like qualities. He will be unable to lie. He will have compassion toward others. Uh, will be incapable of sadistic actions, will have rational thinking, he will be receptive to discussions and shun destructive social activities. His goal and motives will be socially oriented and he will strive to improve his own condition as well as the condition of other people's lives. Physically, such a person will have strong fluid and coordinated body function with healthy tissue and high immunity to illnesses. Uh, Dr. Rach, after his patients were uh, treated successfully and achieved orgastic potency, uh, he described them as follows. He says, when the ability to experience complete genital surrender happened, the patient's personality underwent such a thorough and rapid change that initially I was baffled by it. I did not understand how the tenacious neurotic process could give away so rapidly. It was not only that neurotic anxiety symptoms, depression, uh, and the patient's entire character changed. I was at last to explain this theoretically. I interpreted the disappearance of symptoms as withdrawal of the sexual energy, which had previously nourished these symptoms. But the character change itself eluded clinical understanding. The genital character appeared to function according to different uh, unknown laws. I want to cite a few examples by way of illustration. Quite spontaneously, the patients began to experience a moralistic attitude of the world around them as something alien and peculiar, no matter how tenaciously they might have defended premarital chastity, they now experience these demands as grotesque. Such demands no longer had any relevance for them. They became indifferent to them. Their attitude toward their work changed. If they had previously worked mechanically, had not demonstrated any real interest and had considered their work a necessary evil, which one takes upon oneself without giving much thought, they now became discriminating. The change in sexual sphere was also pronounced. Patients who had felt no qualms in going to prostitutes became incapable of going to them once they were orgastically potent. Wives who had patiently endured living with an unloving husband and had sexually submitted to them out of marital obligation could no longer do so. They simply refused. They had enough. What could I say against such uh, behavior? It was at variance with all socially dictated views. Um, I no longer had a clear conception of the relation of the psychic structure to the existing social system. The change in the patient's attitude with respect to these moralistic codes 
was neither clearly negative nor clearly positive. The new psychic structure appeared to follow laws which had nothing in common with the conventional demands and views of morality. It followed laws that were new to me, uh, of which I had no inkling prior to this. The picture which these laws offered when taken together corresponded to a different form of sociality. They embraced the best principles of official morality, such as the women must not be raped and the children must not be seduced. At the same time, they contained moral modes of behavior, which though flatly at variance with conventional conceptions, were socially unimpeachable. Up, uh, <clears throat> now, up to this point, we have described normal and healthy functioning of a human organism from the ergonomic viewpoint, which entails full pulsation and propagation of the organ energy in the body, as well as a proper discharge by um, healthy and full orgastic convulsions. We will now discuss how and why this healthy functioning with which humans are ordained becomes distorted and sick. In medical terms, we will discuss the pathology that distorts natural functioning of the human organotic system. The most important pathology that interferes and disturbs the normal ergonomic functioning in the body is emotional and physical armoring. Armoring is defined as the organism's defense, a defense structure consisting of emotional and physical rigidities expressed by chronic muscular spasms and characterological incrustations, which function as a defense against emotional expressions, primarily love, anxiety, rage, and sexual excitation. Armoring develops during a child's interaction with his or her environment, which harshly repress the child's expression of those primary impulses. Children initially protest these inhibitions by crying or throwing a temper tantrum, but eventually they submit uh, to the pressure for their own survival and part of these primary drives disassociate and turn against itself and by means of physical and psychological contractions, they repress their natural primary feeling. These muscular and emotional rigidities over time becomes chronic and permanent. And even when environmental conditions change uh, and environmental suppression is lifted, the mechanism of suppression continues by child's own volition from within by established armor. Dr. Morton Herskovich stated, Emotional armoring is one of the most important discoveries in the history of psychiatry. He also described the effects of armoring uh, and stated that armoring converts free laughter into, ca into cackle or Twitter. It may cause a woman to speak in a little girl's voice. It does not merely change a function by degree, but by, by a kind. It renders behavior more predictable and more stereotypal. Armoring constrains the life. Armoring is most often reveals in muscle tension, but it also um, reveals in uh, the eyes in the, uh, uh, in that they are glazed in excessive body fat, etc. Armoring is a dynamic event and entails the consumption of energy. It contains, it contains us physically and emotionally and ideologically. It is a cocoon to which we gradually become accustomed. In ergonomy, 
uh, armored and unarmored organism is schematically depicted and the depiction can be seen in the text. Once the armor is established, free and orderly flow of pulsating organ energy in the body becomes blocked or distorted. This pathological phenomena itself causes a wide variety of sicknesses, which in ergonomy is referred to as biopathies. Rach defines these biopathies uh, as, he says, that uh, the term biopathies refer to all disease processes caused by basic dysfunction in the autonomic life apparatus. Once started, this dysfunction can manifest itself in a variety of symptomatic diseases. Uh, the biopathy can result in carcinoma, carcinomatous biopathy, but it also can uh, lead to angina pectoris, asthma, cardiovascular hypertension, uh, epilepsy, catatonic or paranoid schizophrenia, anxiety neurosis, multiple sclerosis, chorea, chronic alcoholism, etc. We are still ignorant of the factors that determine the direction in which a biopathy will develop. Of prime importance to us, however, is the common denominator of all these diseases, a disturbance in the natural function of pulsation in the total organism. Fractures and local abscesses, pneumonia, yellow fever, rheumatic uh, pericarditis, acute alcohol poisoning, infectious peritonitis, syphilis, etc., are accordingly not biopathies. They do not develop from disturbance in autonomic pulsation of the total life apparatus. They are circumscribed and can only secondarily bring about disturbance of the biological pulsation. Now, pulsation, of course, requires energy, and no pulsation will exist without a propagation of energy. The armor, the pathological base of biopathies, changes natural primary impulses, such as love, rational anger, rational health, and secondarily, uh, distorts the impulses with different tendencies, such as make produces sadistic or distorted sexual impulses, kleptomania, fake altruism, and irrational health as well, irrational anger. Dr. Reich, developed a, Dr. Reich also has developed a blood test, which reflects the red blood cells energetic status and is helpful for determination of ergonomic status of the body. This test is called Reich's blood test and is described in the book Cancer Biopathy as well as it is described by Dr. Vicetti uh, in the articles published in this journal, Journal uh, of Psychiatric Organ Therapy. In ergonomy, the model of human psychological and physical structure is based uh, on uh, uh, different structure. It's the, uh, and based on this structure, we develop treatments. And treatment process is based on this uh, structure. The structure is consists of core, middle layer, and periphery. Reich says, extensive and painstaking therapeutic work on human character has led me to conclusion that as a rule, we are dealing with three different layers of biopsychic structure in the evaluation of human reactions. Rach continues, says that as I demonstrated in my book, Character Analysis, these layers of the character structure are deposits of the social development, which function autonomously. On the surface layer of his personality, the average man is reserved, polite, compassionate, responsible, conscientious. The, there would be no uh, social tragedy of human animal if the surface layer 
of the personality were in direct contact, contact with deep natural core. This unfortunately is not the case. The surface layer uh, of the social cooperation is not in contact with the deep biological core uh, of one's selfhood. It is born by a second and intermediate character layer, which consists of exclusively of cruel, sadistic, um, uh, and envious impulses. It represents the Freudian unconscious, or what is repressed. To put it in the language of sex economy, it represents the sum total of all so-called secondary drives. Organ biophysics made it possible to comprehend the Freudian unconscious, that uh, which is antisocial in man. As a secondary result of the uh, repression of the primary biological urges, these secondary drives develop. If one penetrates through this destructive second layer, uh, deeper into the biological substratum of the human animal, one always discovers the third, deepest layer, which we call it biological core. In this core, under favorable social conditions, man is an essentially honest, industrious, cooperative, loving, and if motivated, rationally hating animal. Yet it is not at all possible to bring about a loosening of the uh, character structure of the present day man by penetrating into the deepest and uh, so promising layer without first eliminating the non-genuine social surface. Now we have to talk about treatment. Now that we talked about uh, uh, normal functioning, ergonomic functioning, and then pathology, what causes the distortions of the normal functioning. Now we have to start talking about the uh, treatment. Uh, we will now discuss the treatment of the pathology uh, and how to restore the natural ergonomic function of the body. The, uh, to treating the biopathies, one focuses on dissolving the armor because the armor itself inhibits the proper flow of biological energy throughout the body and inhibits its proper metabolism by incapacitating the orgastic potency. The treatment should focus on dissolving the armor. Consequently, the, uh, the treatment will re-establish by natural production of the flow of biological energy and restore the body orgastic potency. Although in rare circumstances the armor could be dissolved by chance, uh, the systematic approach for dissolving the armor and restoring orgastic potency uh, and restoring physical and psychological health is only possible through psychiatric and physical organ therapy. Rach described psychiatric organ therapy as combination of character analysis and vegetotherapy. In character analytic work, he says, we begin by trying in a constant and systematic way to isolate the interlaced character attitude and to unmask, unmask them one by one. Uh, uh, the, the, the defense function of them um, uh, and uh, reveal their contemporary meaning and uh, effectiveness. Uh, our uh, purpose to do is to release the affects which at one time were subject to severe inhibition and fixation. This accomplished this is accomplished by loosening uh, the uh, incrustations of the character, 
every successful dissolution of a character in in crustaceans first liberates the emotions of anger or anxiety by also treating these liberated emotions as a psychic defense mechanism we eventually succeed in restoring the patient's sexual motility and biological sensitivity thus by dissolving chronic character attitudes we bring about reactions in the vegetative nervous system the breakthrough into the biological realm is that much more complete and energy charged the more thoroughly we treat not only the character attitude but also muscle attitude muscular attitude corresponding to them to the character attitude this causes a, a, a part of the work to be shifted from psychological and characterological realm to uh, immediate dissolution of the muscular armor to the physical realm in final analysis i could not read myself of the impression that somatic rigidity or muscular rigidity represents the most essential part in the process of repression it can be said that every muscular rigidity contains the history and the meaning of its origin it is not as if we had to drive uh, from dreams or associations how the muscular armor developed the armor is the form in which the infantile experiences is preserved as an impairment of functioning for instance the neurosis is not solely the expression of the disturbance of psychic equilibrium it is rather in far justified and deeper sense the expression of the chronic disturbance of the vegetative equilibrium and the natural motility solving of muscular armor generally begins with the parts of the body usually the head which are furthest away from the genitals it is the facial attitude that is most conspicuous now in this article i do not intend nor i am able to explain the in three cases of the character analysis and vegetotherapy rach has described them in detail in different books as well as dr herskovich has described it in the book uh, emotional armoring rach also described the psychiatric organ treatment of a 27 year old male in his book the function of orgasm in addition to psychiatric organ therapy to dissolve the main pathology in the body the armor rach attempted to harvest atmospheric organ energy by designing a certain therapeutic instrument which he called organ accumulator this instrument was constructed after many years of exper- experiments and several anecdotal reports corroborates its effectiveness the accumulator is composed of certain arrangement of organic and inorganic material that absorbs and reflects atmospheric organ energy this approach is most effective for preventive measures and treating the early stages of biopathies now let's talk about preventive measures after learning uh, physiology anatomy pathology and then treatment approaches from ergonomic point of view uh, uh, in the medical school the medical students usually learn prevention so this is true in the ergonomy as well this sequence is also true in ergonomy uh, if the armoring of the human organism is the pathological base of wide variety of biopathies that affects the human race physically and emotionally and causes an epidemic of neurosis 
can it be prevented? From ergonomic point of view, social, cultural, and economic conditions that causes armoring in children and adolescents must be identified and changed. The main cause of armoring in the children and adolescents are authoritarian, anti-sexual, and anti-pleasure upbringing. It is important that ergonomic theories and principles and concepts uh, of health and sickness be understood and be used as a guide for child rearing. From an ergonomic perspective, social institutions should raise children and adolescents based on children's physical and emotional needs. The social, cultural, and economic institutions should not raise children based upon their own, their institution's agenda and goals uh, and mold them to serve their uh, purposes, such as their nationalistic, religious, or economic ideologies or, or uh, purposes. Preventive measures are explained more thoroughly by Reich in the book Children of Future. Basically, to prevent armoring and raise healthy children, it is imperative that children's autonomic life function be understood and measures be taken to nurture, nurture these functions and bring them up as nature has ordained Reich stated, as long as children will be harmed and hurt with all kinds of ugly things, with the knife right, right after the birth, uh, nothing will change. You cannot impose freedom on the ruined bioenergetic system of children. And history attends, attests to the above statement of Reich. Thank you.